Chapel here. Back with my buddy on the far end there. Todd Huckabee. Mr. Todd Huckabee. We're at the Mississippi Wildlife Extravaganza in Flowood, Mississippi. And guys, has it been packed in here or what? Yeah. It has. It really has. has. Uh, the two guys that got on the show with us today is Clay and Mr. John Harrison. Um, and the subject we're going to cover is wade fishing, but I want to kind of give some history on you two guys. Uh, introduce yourself and let everybody at home kind of know uh, what's, what's your guys' background in this crappie fishing stuff. Well, I've been crappie fishing a long time. I'm John Harrison, the owner of JH Guide Service, and I guess I've been fishing as long as I can remember a long time. I'm not going to tell my age, but <laughs> a long time. Uh, and today I do want to talk about wade fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, a lot of people miss out on a lot of good springtime fishing, you know, because you know a lot of people just don't understand. You can really catch a lot of good fish in, when the water starts warming up in the springtime, and we'll talk about all that here a little bit later. Yeah, Clay? Yeah, my name's Clay Blair. I've been guiding with John for uh, probably 10 years now. Uh, been fishing the lakes for 40 years, mm -hmm. sardicine at Arcabutla, Grenada. Started with my grandfather and my dad. And, Started off with a 14-foot John boat and a pair of khakis or, mm -hmm. or tennis shoes and a pair of shorts wading. Didn't mm -hmm. have waders at the time, so uh, had a lot of fun, caught a lot of fish, so right. looking forward to it. I know, John, I remember one thing you told me one time, you started crappie fishing in your diapers or something. <laughs> <like that>. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother carried me, probably so. I, she opened one of the first bait shops that I can, you know, I don't remember, but they, they did in 1957, somewhere along in there when Grenada Lake was built, but I still have a lot of old pictures of her in the 60s, you know. How cherishable is that? Yeah. But uh, I'm going to kick it off here and, and, and kind of go through the season and what we're talking about. When's the prime time for you guys to, you know, wade fish? And what is wade fishing? I mean, that terminology, if you've never fished for crappie before, what is wade fishing? It's a lot of fun. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, a lot of people, I guess, kind of wait for it to wait on it to get warm middle of March, but normally you can start catching fish in shallower lakes down south if you wanted to wait them in as early as the 15th to the 20th of, of February if you had, you know, some three or four warm nights. And, and I'm not talking about in the 80s. I'm talking about in the high 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, that water temperature and those shallow water lakes will really warm up fast. <clears throat> it, it might be a little hard on wading when it, where the water never leaves because the ground will be soft. Uh, and, in, in the lakes that we fish, like Grenada, Enid, Sardis, and Arca Butler, you know, the winter drawdown, it's dry. Mm -hmm. And then when the springtime comes, the water comes up. And, it, and the ground is hard as concrete. It's very easy walking, mm. you know. But, but also, on the other hand, you, you know, you have to be careful <clears throat> out there wading. Uh, one tip that I, that I have, when you put a pair of waders on, the first thing you want to do, it, you know, and a lot of duck hunters will tell you this, Get you a belt. Put that belt on and pull it as tight as you can right along here. Mm. That way, if you slip and fall, it ain't gonna fill your waders up. You're gonna get a little wet right here, but from here down, you're gonna be dry. You can keep on fishing. <laughs> That's a very good and I, and I have been many, many times. I've stepped plumb to here, nothing floating but my hat, and you know, I'd be wet here, but from mm. here down, I'd be dry. And that also don't fill your waders up and pull you down where you can't, you know, these straps pull you down. It's just dangerous. But wade fishing is a lot of fun, and we have a lot of fun with it there around home. and. Normally, around Grenada and those lakes, when, when the water temperature, it, it varies. A lot of people are always calling and asking, when's the best time to come? <laughs> I can't answer that question. The best time is, is normally in there around the 11th or 12th, 15th of March. That those fish will start coming in. And here's that one thing that I've learned just wading through the years. I mean, you can... When the water gets in those ironwoods, what we call them, or cypress or any kind of brush, those males will head in there to that shallow water. <clears throat> they may not start, you know, turning black because it hadn't quite got to 60 yet, but it'll be 56 or 7. One thing that I always remember, when I'm wading and fishing with my right hand, I'll drag this left hand. In fact, water is, you know, it's just cold. It just feels cold to your hand. You, you mm -hmm. go on. But when you get out and you start dragging that hand and you feel that warm water like bath water to the touch, you're going to find you some males. They're there somewhere. So you, right. Your confidence level goes up high there because they're there somewhere. You, 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 you're going to find them. What's the main type of structure that you're actually looking for? Normally in these lakes here, we look for ironwood trees and cypresses. Uh, they, you know, the, the habitat 
they have a habitat day on all these lakes and they, they put out a lot of stake beds. And if, if that water is, a, you know, waist deep or somewhere around ch chest deep in those stake beds, they'll go to get in those stake beds. A lot of times the water's too high for them to get in there, you know, but we have a lot of patches of ironwoods, what we call just old book brush, and, and they love it. They'll get in there because it'll be a lot of those limbs have fell down. You know, and you'll find a, you know, an old top that's under the water there and you'll get hung in it and sometimes it'll be, you know, 10 or 12 males in that, in that hmm. pile of brush. So you, you were talking about when they draw the water down, how the, it gets real hard. It's right. easy walking. Easy, easy walk. Easy concrete, so, just like have, walking on concrete. Have you found a direct correlation of hard bottom versus soft bottom of where you find I, fish? I, I like that hard bottom. Is that for your comfort or because you think the fish <laughs> like it more? I think the fish really like that harder ground more than that, that, that softer ground. That's just, that's just my opinion. I, I, I like that hard ground. Uh, but like I said, all these lakes, when that water gets low, you, you'll find all of it, you know, good, solid, firm, you know, hard ground to walk on. And you can just, you know, you can get in a, a thicket. I call it ironwood thickets. You can park your boat, get in a thicket, and you can walk for a mile down through there, you know. And, and so... We start catching them in March. You, if that water, will, you know, don't just get real hot, you catch them in March, April, and the first week or two of May, you'll still catch some wading in certain places. But we always start out at the far end, the upper ends of these lakes, as far as you can go. I mean, a, a crappie will go in a, a ditch to where you can just, I mean, you don't even have to have a pair of waders. If that water starts getting warm in a ditch, there's mm -hmm. no wider than three foot and a foot deep, he's going up it. And, and we start as far as we can. And as time progresses and it gets hot, you know, those are the first ones, they're gone, but we're coming on toward the dam. We're coming on down the lake to where the water's been cold. And as you get on down in the lakes where the water's been cold on, on in, in late April and May, you'll still catch those males, you know, in, that, in those shallow creeks and, and the backwater in the, down in the lakes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, every year on the big four, you may not get a good wade year. Uh, right. It varies. If we don't get the rain after they draw the lakes down, it's it's hard to wade. I mean, because there's not any structure in a lot of these lakes now. When the water's pulled down very far, you, you can't hardly find places to, you know, yeah. brush or trees or things like that. So we wait to the rain. Once we get a good rain and the water starts rising, those fish are going to follow that water, too. If you think about it, that water is just rising. It's the warmest water. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of go all the way back to the bank where the bank starts and start working your way back out. What about water color? It I yeah, know grenade is always muddy. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, I'll give you an example. Through the years, I, I've noticed when we'd get a four or five inch rain, I'd go down there in the mornings and fish in a, in a place, and you know, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have much success, and I'd leave and go somewhere else. And I'd come back, and that water done come up, you know, two foot, just fresh water in there, but it was warm. Mm -hmm. And you could see those fish moving in those little, you know, little bushes that come up like this or the grass or whatever you could see there, you know, you see them moving in there. Of course, you'd have to, you know, you wasn't fishing six inches deep. But those old males done moved in there and they were aggressive. They'll bite. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and another thing, like last year when it got so high, you know, I, it was too high in those ironwood bushes. Well, they related to those uh, oaks, those old big hard oak trees. The bigger, the better. You could find one that was real slick and, and, even pine trees. I've never caught a crappie in my life and around a pine tree, never fished them. But, right. you know, over the last four years, we've had high water. It's something about those pines would, you know, those in those I fields. I have heard that before. Those fish would get around those yeah. pines. And I, I guess it's because of the old scaly, uh, right. you know, but we wouldn't pass up no pine trees. Well, I caught a lot of them in pines. Hmm. Look, uh, you know, while we're talking about trees and something to look for mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're actually, you know, searching for them when you're wading. Right. You know, John will tell you too, cypress trees, most all cypress trees have tree, uh, knots on them. Right. Knees. Cypress knees. Cypress knees. Yeah. So you don't actually fish the tree itself. Oh, mm -hmm. there may be a few there, but if you take, a lot of times when I go to a tree, I'll work around it in a big diameter circle and because you'll hit a knot. Those, a lot of times those females are out there on those knots or males, either one. Mm -hmm. um, I, so, I know some of the first ones I caught this year was really early. And, and I, mean, I, you know, just knew where a few scattered cypress was and about the right depth of water. And, and I would start, if that, if that tree's 10, 15 foot up there, I'd start before I'd get to it. I'd take one step, I'd go left, and I'd go right. And I'd take a half a step, go left. And, and somewhere before you got to that tree, one's going to hit it. And it's going to, you know, they'll, they'll be 
it's not going to be just one male there, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, you don't you don't want to just walk up to that cypress and fish around it and Leave. go to the next yeah. one. You want to fish your way to it and then fish your way around it and you know. Methodical I, I, there. I, yeah. I, I know. I know a lot of times people, you know, wade fishing. They fishing with their eyes. They want to just you know that looks good. That looks good. And they they get go caught up fast. in just walking too fast. You know. We caught them here yesterday, but they hey, won't buy it here today. Well, that water hadn't got to that, you know, they just hadn't, you know, it's 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. That water needs to come up about 2 degrees. You know, they ain't going nowhere, you know. Typically in wading, is it a better mid-morning or afternoon or midday? When would be the med peak period in your experience? Like after lunch. After lunch. When you first yeah. start, because yeah. that water, it gives that water time to warm you up. You know, and a lot of people go in the afternoons. And we caught the limit here yesterday afternoon. We mm -hmm. off in the morning. We going back. They go back the next morning. That water's it ain't mm -hmm. warmed up yet. Yeah, that's a good question, John. What do you think about this? What do you, do you think the fish move out of there, or they're there? They just I, won't bite. I think they just they just they won't bite. I think they just you know, won't they bite. They just waiting on that water to get aggressive. You know, I, I, that's what I think. Have you noticed like? Uh, and I'm not a big wade fisherman. I wish I was. I tried wading a couple of times in Lake Washington, and it's muddy. Oh man. You, <laughs> You're stuck. Yeah, yeah, you that, almost need a record to come pull you, you out. Need of to, it. You, if you're going to wade, you need to remember that that lakes that stay the same, like Lake Washington, it's better if you're going to fish shallow water, fish out of a boat. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can get in, and I've caught them at Lake Washington. Uh, just for example, year before last, it was late February, and the water was like three foot deep, and I was catching a few, but the water was like 52, and then I just kept going toward the bank, and I got over there, and, and two foot of water six inches deep i couldn't believe it those old males had done what but mm -hmm. i looked at my depth finder and I, there's your water temp it done got 58 and it's just like 20 feet difference right yep. there but right on that bank that water had warmed four or five degrees and that's they went to the warmest water if they had to get out on the ground i mean they 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 was i'm telling you it wasn't that deep they was <laughs> right under the surface All yeah right. and and back to the trees you know it, they don't have to have trees to spawn. I mm -hmm. mean, it could be grass. A lot of the, a lot of these lakes, yeah, cattails, you know, right? Yeah, they grow up with this green grass in the fall and and in the winter. And when the water rises, you know, a lot of times it'll be green grass, and those fish love to get Bull in there grass, and spawn. So water grass, that's yeah. a really good, you know, they really love that. When when you first start catching the first males up shallow wading, how long typically before you start seeing females? When that when that water gets to about 62 is when I start seeing those females, you know, come in. And, you know, I don't really don't see them in there that long. They'll just come in there for a short period of time. Uh, and, and a lot of times I catch them, you know, those females out deep. And, and, and they got eggs just, you know, just running out of them. But they'll stay out deeper longer than they will seem like shallow. They just... You, you catch a lot of males, and, and we never catch a, really a lot of females until the about the middle of April on, they just kind of staying in there, you know, in that shallow water. But you'll catch like 10 or 12 males and you'll have like three females. You know, you, you, I don't, we don't never catch a lot of females, you know, Wade. Mostly what we catch is males. Those females, they come in, I guess, in a short period of time and, and, and you know, they just kind of move back yeah. out. You know, I've, I've always wondered whether they aren't there as much or whether they're just not as aggressive they as could the males. Be. Yeah, they, yeah, they could be. Yeah, they could be. That male's aggressive, you know, until, you know, when he stays there so long, like up against a cypress field, notice those old males will get a red lips. Their lips will get real red where mm -hmm. they've rubbed. They kind of get then where they you have to hold that bait still and they'll catch a hold of it. They'll try to yeah. Move, move your hook you out of the way and you jerk miss about half of them or mm -hmm. you're up in a tree squirrel hunt or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they just not as aggressive as time progresses as they are when they first come out hmm. there. Yeah, um, I think that'd do, kind of be opposite. Do, yeah. Do you always just straight jig or do you ever use a small cork? Most time we just, we just straight jig fish. We just straight, we may have to, you know, like I said, the later you go and the more that gets caught, you, you have to just hold that jig in there and then you'll 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 see the end of your pole go down. He'll move your line a little bit, and you know they really get hard to catch. Then a lot of I have had to take take a Coca Cola bottle, stick you know stick me some holes in it, put me about ten minnows in <laughs> yeah. it, tie it to a little string, and pour me out one, and hold that minnow in there. You know, just hold it, hold it in there with a jig head. Now he'll kind of get a hold of that old male and pull it on down to get it out of the way. 
That's a that's a beginner's way though. If he if he didn't really know too much about fishing with a jig, yeah, he can take a, a cork and a, yeah. and a hook mm -hmm. and a split shot and carry him some minnows in there and watch the cork go down and it it, it it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's that, fun to watch the that, cork. Them males is gonna bite that minnow yeah. when they won't bite a jig. They yeah. they gonna they not gonna let it stay there. What do you think the reasoning behind that is? It to protect that area or is it actually? To I, I, eat? Yeah, he don't want nothing in there. He's just mad. He's mad. Yeah. He's mad at everybody. <laughs> Probably a little of both, you know, yeah. to protect and eat. You know, if they see a minnow coming through, they, they're going to eat, but, they, you know, protect it from if fries mm -hmm. in there are, or not fry, but eggs are in there, you know, so. Um, but, yeah, it's fun for a beginner to do that. We used to do it as kids. You know, I was telling you a little bit about years ago we didn't even have waders. We just mm -hmm. got out and waded in blue jeans and, and a pair of shoes. And my granddaddy, that's all he would fish with was a minnow. He'd carry his minnows in there, and he would yeah. catch them with a minnow. We'd carry a stringer and, and mm -hmm. had a little 14-foot mm -hmm. boat. We'd pull up in there. It was so, it's, it's, it's so fun if you ever yeah. get on them. The first wading I remember as a child, kid growing up. Toddler. Yeah. We, we, we would take those old knee boots. My grandmother had those old knee boots. And back then in those little fields, a lot of little patches of water would come up. And it was cuckleburrs would come up, just real thick cuckleburr patches. And of course she could, you know, she was a good fisherman. She could see them in those cuckleburrs, they was moving them, but we never jig fished or nothing. We'd just take a, you know, a cane pole and break the end off of it and make us some wire eyes and tape them on there and use some 50 pound test meals in and a four old Aberdeen <laughs> hook and a cork and just pitch it out there where you saw one moving and the whole minter, you know, we'd get the biggest minters we could put on there. And, you know, we, and you'd catch them, you know, and, and they, they would wait, go out till they just about get over their boots and, you know, would catch them with corks and minnows. It's a wait. That'd be interesting. To well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I go back now, and when I go back in those places over, you know, nearly 50 years, remembering that little old field and that, you know, cuckaburr patch, it's all changed now, it's cypress trees, and it's just not the same. But, you know, I just, I remember those little old patches where they was, and, and, you know, over time, it's all changed. You know, that water level, it, it's a happy medium, wouldn't you say? Yeah. If it gets too high, it makes it harder getting, to wade. If, if you get up like it has been, and you can get away from everybody, and it's good wading, but those fish, when it gets, I'm going to use Grenada, when it gets 228, 229, 230, 231, like it has the last four years, you, you got to walk and walk and walk. Now, you might pull, walk up to this cypress and catch three, but you might not catch another for an hour walking. Mm -hmm. But it's easy walking. It's a, it's a good exercise for you if you like me and need the exercise. Uh, but some of those thickets, when you get in there, they're so thick, you crawl yeah. in them. Yeah. And, I mean, you're you're yeah. getting low as you can. Sounds and like rabbit hunting almost. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 vines, and a lot of this stuff has yeah. been grown up I, through I the years. I would say a good a – good, wow. Good rabbit patch? <laughs> 216 to 220, it's not real high, but it's high enough that it's enough in that green stuff. And when you find a, a, a top, it'll have good numbers in it, mm -hmm. you know, because it ain't got 15 more foot away. got thousands of acres, of, you know, to get in. And, you know, it's good for the fish. It's good for, you know, everything. What about uh, somebody saying, listening right now, and I don't know what I need. What do they need to get out there and, and start waiting? Or, you know, go ahead. It can't cost that much to wait, I would imagine. Probably waiters be the most expensive Yeah, it's not like piece. duck hunting. I mean, I mean, you get you a good pair of waiters because, you know, when you – Walking in the woods and the brush and stuff, you, you might, you know, need you a good pair. Just get you a pair of waders, uh, and for safety purposes, certainly get you a belt and put around them. Uh, cause you and know, that's on the outside of the waiter, right? Yeah, on the outside. Just take that belt, yeah. you know, and put around you put around you here and, and, you know, pull it pretty tight. And, you know, one you know, other thing I want to mention on the safety aspect mm -hmm. when you're wading, you can get you a stick, a pretty yeah. good-sized stick, mm -hmm. a walking stick, and kind of feel the water as you're right. going mm -hmm. because you never know. These beavers and stuff on these reservoirs right. have made runs, and you'll step off in them. I've done it before myself, and you'll step off, and it won't be anything but your cap up there, you, you know, cap floating and, on the water. And so. I'll give you an example of that. I, I, like I said, I've been fishing in Grenada since I could walk, and it was this year one time I jumped out of the boat and it was I was walking, you know, this way and my buddy went this way and as soon as I got to the water's edge, and I've been there a hundred times. I, I mean, I took the first step. Nothing was floating but my cap. I thought, what, did, <laughs> what just happened? I stepped in a hole and I turned and looked up in the woods and it was a beaver that had dug a ditch. Yeah, from, you just don't know. There was a hut up there and they come right down that bank and dug a ditch. And that one step from dry ground here, one step, and I'm over my head. Wow. Of course, I had that belt on, you know, and I blew water and backed out, and hat was floating. But, you know, I, 
I was all right, you know. I mean, I, I didn't get no water, but it, but at that point, if if, if I hadn't had that belt on, them waders mm -hmm. would have filled up. I can't get back out. I can't. That's right. I can't, you can't swim. Th them them straps would have stretched, and waders full of water would have pulled you down. I mean, I couldn't have got out. And, I mean, and it, like I said, I'm not a I, I'm not a big wading kind of guy. I would like to do it. It's, I mean, it sounds terrific. Oh, it's, I've it's just it, never it, been able. To, but I, I never heard about the belt. I'll be honest yeah. with you. I've and never and heard here's about another it. thing. When you get over in that boat, you, you know, you get caught up in wading. You, you jump in here, you go fish this thicket, you jump yeah. in the boat and you go to this thicket. Always remember one thing when you get in that boat, reach and take that strap and undo them straps on, off your waders. Because if you if you cutting across here, running, I'm going to hurry, hurry here, whatever reason, a boat wave or whatever, that boat turns over, them straps, you're going to fill them waders full of water and you're going down. And ain't no coming back up. You can't kick them off. You can't. You don't think about kicking them off. You're gonna drown. So and make sure you use that kill switch. And we'll yeah. throw that. Yeah. Make sure there. you put that kill switch kill, on there. But it's like Clay had a good point a while ago. We keep old sticks in our boat. You know, a lot of times, and they're a little aggravating, little strippings, like you know, five foot little old strippings of a bamboo cane or any kind of beaver sticks is good. Just pick up one, but just hold it in your left hand. You know, and it's always good to keep that, mm -hmm. keep that in your left hand. Fish with this hand, and and, and punch away in front of you. And here's another thing to remember, when, you, when you're getting close to those old beaver ditches or something, or, or ruts where people's cutting four-wheel drives out there, you sliding your feet along, you know, don't just walk fast, right. just kind of mm -hmm. slide yeah. your feet. And when you feel that ground kind of getting hard, kind of changing a little, you know, a little change mm -hmm. on that ground, just stop and take precautions, you know. But wading, wading's a lot of fun fishing. It, it has, it, it's a way to, you know, to catch a lot of fish and have a lot of fun, but, you know, it's a danger side to it. Just be careful. You know, just mm -hmm. take your time and, and, and fish real slow and be careful. And I, I think you'll have success in it. Like you asked a question a while ago about the um, the equipment needed, you yeah. know, a pair of waders and a, a jig pole. You know, I like a Sam Heaton, uh, mm -hmm. super sensitive. And it depends when we were talking about if we're really up in that thick stuff. I'll take an eight foot or a 10 foot mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and then if you're having to reach out, say you're fishing around the edge of a creek or something, you want some reach, you take a 12 foot and stuff like that. But other than that and getting something take, like take a that. a little, little yeah. thing like that, yeah. put you a few what, baits in it, stick it in your pocket. Yeah. Right. What do you want to, um, what pound test are you guys using? Are you using braided or are you I, using? I, I normally, or? I just use, you know, the water, most time the water clarity in the, you know, is kind of stained up water. I use eight. I use yeah. about eight, ten pound test. Just a gamma, you know, you, just you know, a gamma line. You can pull it, pull mm -hmm. it, kind of bend that hook a little and pull it on out, you know. And you don't want to, I wouldn't say go to nothing, no no smaller than six. But if you're fishing heavy brush, I'd, I'd go to about eight or ten pound. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the biggest question that we get back in Oklahoma, which, of course, everybody back home, noodles. Mm -hmm. And everybody says, well, man, what about the turtles? What about the snakes? Yeah. What about the big yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, Only, I, and I tell them, trust me, the catfish is going to do more damage yeah. to you than mm -hmm. any of those. I, Have y'all ever encountered anything like that that people <laughs> need to know about? Alligators. Are, people are you know, we don't have no that. alligators. Or well, yeah. the, the, we see pictures all the time on Facebook of mm -hmm. alligators at Enid and Sardis, but yeah, I, I know John and I are on I've never seen one, no. so... Um, I don't know where they're getting the pictures. I'm not saying it's not yeah. true, but right. uh, we've never I've never ran uh, uh, account. Don't worry about it. But, and I tell you what me and him ran up on. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is an interesting story here. Me and him was fishing at Sardis like two, two about two years ago. Two or three yeah. years ago, and it was May, early May. I was in my little fifteen foot war eagle and we going up through these bushes and I said, I ain't seen the first snake. <laughs> Jinx. Yeah. And I look up about from here to the door and I said, Look, Yana, what a water marks. We got on up there and got on up there and closer we got. I said, yeah, that ain't a water mark. I said, that's a little close enough. <laughs> Stop. It was a, it was Stop. a rattlesnake, one of the biggest ones I ever saw in my life. And I videoed it. He was that big around. And <laughs> it was a timber rattler. I, I didn't even know they'd get in the water. He was out in the water. I, I had seen a little one out on Grenada before years ago, a little one out in the water. But he was just, I videoed him. He was going over that trash, you know, and I threw a little stick, but went away to get to him or nothing. Mm -hmm. He went on out on the bank, and I thought, boy, if I'd have been wading in that trash pile, I... I but tore it up. But as much as and, and and you can ask him as well. But as much as I've ever waited, yeah, I've never had a snake 
really aggressive no. around me. And you know, it's cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, in, even in May when it warms up, you'll see them and you'll hear them bloop, they'll fall yeah. off, but you don't ever pay them no attention, you know, and they, you'll see one going here, one running here, but as far as one running up to you or trying to, yeah. you know, I never, I mean, and, and they're gonna, we've waited on many hours. They're going to they're gonna swim by, yeah. and I remember as back to when I was a boy and my granddaddy, we had cane poles, mm -hmm. and, a fit, and a snake would come by, and he would take that cane pole and just, it was, you know, 14-foot cane <laughs> pole, so and he'd just push the snake out of the way, mm -hmm. and the snake wouldn't ever, it wouldn't turn on him, and it would just keep going. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not really there to, to hurt you. I mean, yeah. if you step on them, sure, they yeah, may bite right. you, but they're not just going to come out of a bush. No. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. You know, the worst place is if you're going to run out on the bank and walk around over yonder to another spot, when you get out in that grass where it ain't no water, that's where your cotton mouth will be. But, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, as far as out in that water, I'd, I'd a lot rather be out there wading in knee-deep or waist-deep as I had up on that bank. And, Brad, like you said, usually when you're in there, that water temperature is cool, so they're they not really you don't, aggressive. They're no. not aggressive. They don't care. They're not going to bother. You might see them laying in a treetop or something. They don't even a big one, you know, but he won't move unless you hit him or something. He won't move. They don't care. You know, they don't bother you. I, w I wish I'd have bought, I brought some fishing line in here and kind of talked about a knot as far as we use wading. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people take, and I don't know how good he can see this, but a lot of people take the line and they'll cinch it down in the eye. Mm -hmm. And that bait will turn, and when they're fishing, they're fishing straight like up this. Down. Straight, straight up and down. Yep. And that's yep. not natural. If, if you can put a loop knot in there mm -hmm. and it pivots, then that bait will pivot the whole time when it's coming through the water and it mimics a, a, a bait fish or, or a, a and, minnow and or it, something. And it always stays where it's supposed to. And no, yep. matter, no matter how many yep. fish you catch on it, it's gonna be, that bait's going to be where it's supposed to be. But mm -hmm. that will catch many a fish like that, making sure you have that loop, loop knot and that, that bait's coming through the a water like that. small loop knot? What, what size loop knot would small. you Small. Just a small, well then a half inch? A yeah. quarter? Quarter inch? Yeah, quarter to a half. And it really don't matter. I've gotten a hurry before and mine have been an inch. Yeah, he tied yeah. one on for me in the last term we fished and it was about that long. It's, I looked at him and said, don't worry. When you get I said, old, you can't see. <laughs> I don't want that. Right. So I bit it and retied it. But yeah, he when, said it won't hurt he, anything. Nah, when you get <laughs> old. It, uh, he caught all the fish that day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about but, like jig sizes? I mean, then let's go back to even what size jig heads would you say? Because I know you're not dropping I, I, deep or anything I, like that. I, I guess my favorite, probably my my favorite one is a, a 16th. Mm -hmm. 16th ounce. Uh, uh, Grenada Lake Tackle has, has certainly got some of the best jig heads that I've ever used. Uh, hooks, uh, 16th and 8th. I, I, I don't never fish any heavier than a Mm -hmm. If I fish with an eighth, I'm kind of going to fish a little bit deeper, but wading, I, I want a sixteenth ounce jig head. And if that wind gets up a little bit and you're yep. in an open area, you might move to that eighth ounce yep. just to feel them a little bit better. But other than that, sixteenth, you know, when up in the bushes and stuff is, is good. So, about big baits, big profiles, you seem to, are you ever downsized? Sometimes, wind? sometimes I have downsized to 30 seconds. You know, when, mm -hmm. if a front, cold front comes through or something, you know, and, you know, you've been catching fish, you know they're there. And that, that cold front come through last night, you want to fit, you know, I, I have dropped down to 30 seconds, especially when they get into that, you know, that mood, they don't want to bite, you know. Yeah. I start out with a 30 second until that water warms up, and then I might, I might go on to a 16th. Have, have you noticed color making a difference at all in baits? In the as long as it's lime and chartreuse or chartreuse <laughs> and lime, I don't never really... I thought you was an orange kind of guy. Yeah, orange too. I mean, the yeah. thing is too, usually that time of year, the water's still yeah, pretty orange, murky. Yeah, orange and chartreuse so. or, you know. I, every time I walked to John Harris, I mean, me and John fished tournaments for years, and every time I'd kind of, especially in the spring, you want to walk past John Harris's boat. I think a lot of times it might have been decoys, but uh, <laughs> you had to kind of pay attention to what he had on his, you know, his poles out there. Yeah, he I, likes that lime and chartreuse yeah. and that orange. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were decoys, so now I'm actually getting to know if, I, <laughs> if it was decoys or the real deal. But. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it, it's pretty basic. I mean, waiting is 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 very fun. It's something you don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar bass and boat he, to go. And you know, do. that's something through the years that hadn't really changed a lot. But you go back mm -hmm. to your other fishing. I mean, look look where we are today. Oh, wow. Yeah, from cane poles to from trolling and live. Man, I remember. And, I, my grandmother, when I first took, picked up a jig pole, yeah, she had a fit. I mean, yeah, that ain't the way to fish. But, you know, and then we, we, we jig fished. And, and, I mean, look where we are with these live scopes yeah. and all today. It, but wading is something that ain't it really never changed much. Mm -hmm. It's the same mm -hmm. same style of fishing now, other than cane poles as it was way back, you know, what years ago. Equipment wise, I know we said, we've, all right, I've got my, my pair of waders. Yeah. I've got my belt. Yeah. I've got me some 16th ounce jigs. 
I've got some lime and chartreuse. Yeah. Or what? And what else am I going to need? I want everything I need to go wait. You might need you a good warm pair of socks if you got them thirty dollar waders on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I carry an extra pair of warm socks with you in case you get your feet wet. Yeah, right. <laughs> All yeah, right. like we talked a second ago, you know, as far as B and M poles, the the Sam Heaton Super mm -hmm. Sensitive is my favorite. And lengthwise, it just varies on what I'm fishing. If I Deep need some reach, 10, yeah. 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 You know, I use 11 sometimes, and then sometimes when I get where I can't hardly walk through those thickets, you know, I might go to a Caps and Cove with nine foot or something, you know. Because so, yeah. those old males are pretty tough, you know. you got to jerk them on out of there. Yeah. You can't let them wrap you up. You got to mm -hmm. come on one, out one other thing that, w it, that helps a lot when you're wading, too, um, is a small net. Get you a small little net that you can put on your waders, and that way when you set the hook, you, instead of trying to catch them with your hand, you can just yeah. reach. And a, and a metal stringer, a clip stringer is always yeah, a good chain to Chain stringer, I always yeah. like a chain. Chain over chain. the string? I like a chain, yeah, because yeah, you're fast Definitely. to hook him up and drop yeah. him, you know. Yeah. Do, do y'all notice if, let's say, it's the perfect wading day and you're in there catching those males, are the fish that you're catching up there as big as what you'd be catching out on the main lake? No, I, I wouldn't think so either. I've never, I mean, i never caught but two that, I'd say, I remember two over three pounds waiting with a pair of waders on in waist deep water, waiting. I, I, I only remember maybe two. Now, I've caught a lot of big ones, but over three pounds was waiting. I, I can't remember catching over two or three. We talked about that not long ago, mm -hmm. John and I did, you know, about why we don't catch, you know, the big three pound females moving up and stuff. And I, I, we, I don't know. And he did, and you I know, mean, I can catch them big. trolling, you know, through yeah. the years I've caught them mm -hmm. trolling in water I could have waded in, you know, but. They're not up around the trees mean, and stuff. Yeah. Like you, like you said you, a while ago. Do you think those bigger fish are spooked? I think it's such a small window that they go in there and come and put those eggs out and come back out. That's it. It's, they just don't stay there. I mean, I believe they go in and come out. What about full moons? I know I, you always hear people asking about a full moon. Hey, man, it's I, a full moon. Do we need to go or do we need to hold off when it's not a full moon? I, man, I don't know. I, I just go fishing. When yeah, I get a chance to go fishing, you get a day off, go fishing. I that's think it's I something think. to do with it, with the full moon, but I'm mm -hmm. going to fish regardless. Right. Um, I've had people actually call up and cancel. I have too. And say, man, we look, we watching the moon. We just know? noticed that the full moon says that it, you know it's going to be the 18th of this month. I yeah. won't, I don't want to fish yeah. that full yeah. moon. <laughs> I, I read these almanacs and yeah. it says this is the poorest Prime time to fish. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, man, uh, well, I just I, don't believe. I've that. been on where it say the you know sports afield used to have a magazine that say best, and I'd go mm -hmm. and it wasn't that good. And I'd go on poor days and they'd, they'd bite as good. <laughs> right. So I never really paid that a whole lot of attention. If you get a chance to go fishing, go fishing. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that all the way. What about other equipment you can think of? I think that pretty much is, sums it up as far as I, I, it's, I've learned. Actually, a couple of things I'd say today is I, I would have never thought about the belt. Yeah. The, the that's even safe even. for duck hunting, you know. Yeah. That's that's the old duck hunting trick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even in the, the metal stringer compared to, a, you know. A, yeah, and a those string. chain stringers are cheap. You can buy yeah. them at Walmart for yeah. nothing. Yeah. And it because if you got, you got to untie and put it on that stringer and pull him down, but that chain you leave it on there and you you know it's you know I cut mine and where it only hangs about that much and put that eye on it. Another thing too, you know, of course, all the four lakes up there where we're fishing, it's got to be over 12 inches. So you need a, a belly board to make sure you measure them, because yeah. you know. Or put it, a mark on your pole. I take yeah, a permanent yeah. marker, mm -hmm. and, and like on my pole here somewhere, I'll just put a mark from here to there. You know, I mean. That way you can just. That way you kind of you can look yeah. tail and get you a eye. You know, before you drag him around and, and he dies, you That's know, before right. you get back to the boat, because if you drag him around for two hours and that water 60 degrees. He ain't hardly gonna yeah. make it. Right. So you know, that'll give you an idea. Just take you a, a permanent marker, you know, put you a little mark or something on there. Well, I've, I've actually learned a good bit today. And like I said, this was one of the shows I've been waiting to do for a while. And uh, man, I appreciate you guys. Todd, you need you to, yeah, thank you. You need mm -hmm. to come up, Brad, at Grenada, Sardis, Enid, when they get to bite next spring, come up and join, yeah, jump okay. the boat with us. On, on an average day when, when it's good, how many guys y'all see out there waiting? The thickets are full of them. It's, <laughs> it's getting very popular. It's, it's unreal. I mean, so there'll be hundreds? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every thicket <laughs> you go to, 
I mean, every thicket that I went to, and I think, well, ain't nobody in this thicket. They don't know about it. And you pull up, and everything's quiet, and you get that boat tied, and you hear somebody, <coughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really become a very very popular thing, you know, around home. Uh, that, because like I said, it's a lot of fun. Hmm. There you go. We need to come up here and film you. Hey, I'm game for that. Yep. We can we can set that up for next spring. I would love it. I don't want to do it. I mean, have to it's get free. Hunter a little. One man boat to float off. Yeah, we'll I've got, I've got, I've got, a, I got we'll, a. We'll just tie him onto the back. I, I got a pee Drag him around behind there you. you. Go. I got a pee rope. Yep. Hunter's giving us the two hundred ninety nine dollars. Academy Sports. There you, there you go. All right. All right, guys. I definitely appreciate it. Hey, hit subscribe. We need them. Uh, comments, anything you can do like that, it helps the algorithm. If, if anybody's got any questions about waiting, feel feel free to give us a call. That's right. What's your number, we, John? Throw yeah, it out there. Six six two nine eight three five nine nine nine. Give me your number, Clay. 662-501-0302. Uh, just give us a call anytime. We, you know, we'll help you any way we can with whatever questions you have about waiting. Just uh, give us a call. We, we'll help you any way we can. And be sure in the comments to tell us anything that you want to hear about. You know, whether it's tail race fishing mm -hmm. or there's there's a lot of crappie fishing techniques and styles that sure. have not been talked about, have not been covered bank fishing fishing off of your own dock that type of deal yeah, absolutely um, you know we've all got kind of tunnel vision of, yeah because mm -hmm. we have boats and we have mm -hmm. electronics and we go do what we do but there's a lot of people that don't have yeah. that yep so, yeah if you've got a question about crappie fishing any, anything at all man, we'll help you because ready, we, we can find help. somebody like these guys that know what they're talking if we about hadn't done it we know to, somebody that has that's we'll, right we'll, we'll get that's you the exactly right Anyway, until next time, Brad Chapel here. Todd Huckabee. John Harrison. Clay Blair. Holla. Out of my front, big muddy river, a place I'll always remember. Cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel